Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel, nice to see you again. Today, we're gonna to be attacking this tank. So I've already emptied it and got rid of everything that was in it, because basically I was just growing cyanobacteria in it. But we're gonna start again, and it's a nice change to the channel. It's not a mega tank, it's not an eight foot aquarium, it's not a weird and wonderful fish that nobody can really keep. It's a normal, this is a Fluval Roma 125, a normal 125 litre tank. I'm gonna set it up with a nice aquascape, nothing over the top, nothing too extravagant. It's just gonna be something that anyone can do, and I am anyone, so I'm going to do it. The aim here is that I am trying to convert my fish room into having more nice tanks. So I had lots of tanks that were for breeding, for little projects, for this, that, and the other, but I just want something that looks nice. I've got more and more tanks in here, are just nice, simple scapes that bring me a little bit of joy, a little bit of pleasure, and hopefully I can show you how I do it, what my process is, what's working for me, and you can achieve the same sort of thing. So there's gonna be nothing in here that's unachievable, unattainable. This is the kind of thing anyone can do. Let's get on with it. So we start where we should start with all planted tanks. It's the substrate. Um, it's kind of the bedrock for any good aquascape is having a good substrate. Um, yes, you can grow plants in sand, you can grow them in gravel, you've seen me talk about that before, but it's not the easiest. So this is about being easy, something that's going to maintain itself as much as possible. Um, so what we've done is we've emptied out the majority of the sand that was in here and cleaned it up, that's it, in a bucket. So, But this is the, the top dressing, if you like, for the substrate. What I want is something underneath all this that's going to give lots of nutrients to the plants. But before even substrate actually, I have to consider where I'm going to be spending most of my time looking at this from. Because if I was spending my time looking at it from this angle, I would want to create some kind of depth where it would be maybe a lower substrate here looking like it rose up into the background. So I will be spending a lot of time looking at it from here, but I'll also spend a lot of time looking at it from the same angle as you. So I kind of want a bank into the middle so as I've got some interest and lines of sight from both directions. I don't know why that works, but it does. It's what I've done in the past. So job number one really is to build any kind of banking that I want in there with some bags of gravel. I do it with things that are inert and inanimate things, get them in there to kind of start the shape going. Then I put the plotting soil, plotting soil? The potting soil over that and then your actual top dressing so the sand goes on top of that. And then that gives you your general shape. So let's do that. There's nothing fancy about this, it's just gravel. Try not to drop it from a great height so as you don't smash anything. And then if you've got a tool a bit like this, it's just basically for moving things around. I'm just I'm kind of just creating that first little bit of interest in the landscape. So this is my Little bucket, this used to be a big massive bucket, but I've transferred it into a little one now that we've got it. Where any old tanks that I'd run, where I had the substrate in them and I changed them over, because I am a YouTuber, I do change things every now and again. I save everything that I change. And this is a mixture of sand, gravel, compost, aquatic potting soil, all kinds of stuff in there. It's just stuff. Um, yes, you can use uh, pond soil, uh, you can use planted aquarium, substrates, all that kind of thing, but this kind of does the same thing. Because this is in lots of used tanks, I've made this up, it's just packed full of nutrients and, and goodies. So there is aquatic potting soil in there, there is aquarium planted soil specifically, but it's just all mixed in with a bit of everything. So I'm going to give the kind of base layer of my aquarium is just going to be made up of this, which will give something that any plants that are going to root into it have got somewhere to go and get some nutrients from. I'm calling it the potting soil, but it's basically that mix of everything that's just all the old tank goodness. I could at this point, and probably will, add in a few root tabs where I want the majority of the plants to go, because like I say, I'll be viewing this from both these angles, most of the plants are going to be at the back to the sides, so I don't really need that much at the front here. Most of this is going to be concentrated towards the back hillock. Hillock? Shall we call it a hillock? Let's go with hillock. And then again, we're back in with the smoothing tool just to kind of 
finagle and finesse and get everything kind of where we want it. We know we're going to be concentrating plants towards the centre and the back, but move it around a little bit so at least we've still got that illusion of some kind of landscape and there we go. So I've turned the light on just so you can see what's going on. But as you can see, we've got a little bit of a mound, everything going towards the back. It's at this point I would normally think about hardscape. So if I'm going to have some rock or some wood, I'll start positioning them here and playing around with them to see if I like it. Because then it saves me on the top dressing. So the sand, I don't need to do the areas that a rock's going to be sat on because a rock will be sat on it. Um, I also want to think about filter placement. I'm not sure whether I'm going to run a sponge filter on this or stick an internal filter in it. I don't have any spare canister filters, so they are my two options at the moment. Um, I'm thinking an internal filter towards that back corner because it's kind of hidden by all this gubbins here, so I won't be able to see it. Um, that might be the best. So, filter over there with the heater over there probably. Some kind of... I'm thinking minimal hardscape, rock and woods, and planting around it. Uh, I want it to be quite heavily planted. So, at this stage, I often say this in videos I make about aquascaping, is my approach is just chuck stuff in and see what happens. That's what works for me. I'm not that picky. If you spend a lot of time doing this kind of thing, it's really rewarding, so if you're into it, by all means, I'm not saying you, you shouldn't spend a lot of time. Go and look at lots of videos like MD aquascaping and all that kind of stuff. See if you can draw inspiration from other people, but I very much just like to chuck stuff in, move it around and find something that I like the look of. I'm looking for lines, I'm looking for flow, all that artsy barpsy stuff. So let's see how we got on. I think it's kind of important to step back every now and again and just take a look and see what's going on there. Uh, in this particular one I've got the two rocks either side of the wood, all giving a suggestion of this way and then the one in the front is just kind of flat and not doing anything. Now I think I could change that by either altering the shape or the position of the rock or maybe by putting extra smaller rocks in. I will always go around at the end and decorate with like little shards of these rocks to make it look a little bit more natural but I kind of want to get the main ones right and it's just not quite right there I don't know if adding in one more I want odd numbers so I don't want three I don't want four rocks don't want six rocks I want three or five main ones um, but I don't know if two more larger rocks might make it look a bit too busy but we'll try it and see Ugh, and fall over I think I like that. I think we're going to go with five. Uh, four larger ones and one smaller ones, but everything is just pointing in this direction, giving a kind of general feeling of flow towards that side. And I think if I put the filter there, it blows things that way, that will only accentuate it. So if I put some longer plants at the back, some bushier ones on the wood and on the rocks maybe, you'll see all that flow going in this direction. And maybe that'll look quite good. Maybe. Right. Sand next. And this is nothing more than just getting the sand spread out as much as I can. Be under no illusion. If you pick like a really dark sand and a really light first layer, they will mix eventually. So try and pick something that's not too offensive because over time things will mix. My goal here is to cover up the areas that are bare first and then I can push it into the crevices between the rocks. A little bit more than you think you need and again get in there with your spudger, well, no that's not what it's really called, and move it around. Fill in all the gaps and you'll notice that by putting in the rocks and stuff first 
I've created little areas that'll hold back the soil so everything's not going to immediately just fall back down to the front when I add water later which has created little areas for planting which is exactly what we want to do so at first it might look like you're covering up with the rocks that you've just put in but by the time you've moved everything around it'll look a lot more natural And when you put in water, that will also level things out a bit. So next is plants. Uh, I'm not going to do anything too revolutionary here. We're going to have plants that grow taller towards the back. We're going to have plants that grow shorter towards the front. We might stick some in some crevices in that nice piece of wood there that we've got. We might stick some in the rocks. Or we might just wedge things. Um, We'll see how it goes. So I'm going to use plants that I've got around. I've got a couple that I've been saving to use. Um, don't really have a plan other than knowing what plants that I've got and that I want to use. So we're probably going to go with some valves towards, towards the back. Maybe some Amazon Sorge mixed in towards the back as well in the central area. I've got some big, decent big uh, Anubias that I want to spot around everywhere. Maybe some java fern to give some bushiness and some crypts maybe along the front, decorating the front or around the rocks. Again, we'll play it by ear and see how it goes. So this is what I'm using as my start, as the focal point. This is a big Anubius, it's a, a big mother plant that I've been saving. It's huge! Um, you get them, they're really slow growing, but you get them, they're maybe two or three of these leaves and over, over the years they'll grow into something like this. This is a lovely big green example. I think that'll look great as a centerpiece, just in that middle and behind, in between all the rocks and the wood. They don't like the highlight, so it should get some shade from this big piece of driftwood. And if I surround it with larger, taller growing plants as well, that should also help. That should just look the dog's danglies. So let's get that in first and then see where we end up with everything else. So it's actually come apart, it's two or three plants. And just to talk a little bit about this, these, the white bits, are the roots. This is the bit that can go in the substrate. The, this big, thick bit here that you might be able to see that runs along there that all the stems are coming off. This is the rhizome. This is the bit you do not want to put in the substrate because if you bury this, it'll start to rot over time. So you only want to bury here. Um, sometimes what you'll do is wedge this somewhere, like in between some branches or in between some stones, and the roots if you can't poke them into the substrate, will find their way into the substrate and it will usually do quite well that way. You can glue it here, so the rhizome gets some super glue, some... Um, stick it on the rhizome, stick it to what you want it to go to and the placement you want it and then that will harden off and you should be good. But I'm going to plant this as in put these roots so this bit's just sitting on the substrate. And a good pair of tweezers is useful for this. In fact, I want my angled tweezers. Where are they? Okay, I've got these ridiculously big angled tweezers. I can't find my normal sized ones, but we'll go with these. Sometimes there's just no substitute from getting your finger stuck in there. Again, I just don't want the rhizomes covered up, so I'm just going to double check that that hasn't happened. And that's kind of what I'm going for here. I've got this snaking round. And then if I plant taller plants towards the back, and this itself will give this a little bit of shade so it's not in full light, because they don't really like full light. Next I've got some giant valves. These are the Gigantica Rubra variants. These will get too big and require often to be cut, but that's fine. I'm okay with that, because again, when they get too big, what they actually do is... Oh, don't want to break it. What they actually do is send their leaves will bend back over and again provide some shade and these are a great plant because they send off runners and create new baby plants like that one so if i can plant these so this is a pot of these that i got that I sell on my website hashtag buy my stuff there's like three or four different plants in there i can plant them across the back and they will just continue to multiply and i'll get more and more of them for free and who doesn't like for free?
And then I've got another Anubius, a slightly larger, taller Anubius, rather than larger, I suppose. Um, Heterophilia is this one here, which again, I think will make a nice shady background to type mid-ground plant. I'm going to go for right in here. I think that will look good there. It still gives me loads of space around the front, around the behind this to the side of this, to plant some of the smaller things. And if you haven't guessed already, it's a good idea to plant big. Um, I can't stress this enough. When you get new tank syndrome of things looking all algae and horrible, it's often because you've not got enough plants. So if you stick in, overload plants straight away, they start taking up a lot of the nutrients and just help your start, help your tank get off to the best start it can. So one more background-ish plant. This is the Cryptocorian Balancé, one of my favourites. Um, I say that about everything, but this definitely is one of my favourites. It grows big, will fulfil that role again of growing large, curling over and providing a little dappled shade for the Anubius underneath. That's going to go just in that pocket right behind that bit of wood, hopefully. Again, this is actually like three or four plants. I could move them around and have them in different places, but I'm going to roughly put them all in the same place, which is right here. And they've got these lovely crumpled, crumply leaves that just look it's like a great texture. Something a little bit different. Um, yeah, because I want this to be like a big bushy thing, so I'm going to put that all in the same sort of area. So they're spaced out a little bit, but they're in the same general vicinity. Another crypt next, this one is the Biketti, which is nice, lovely red stems and the uh, narrow green leaves. I'm going to split this into two. Again, most of these plants that come in pots, you can always get three or four plants out of them. This one's got about ten. So I'm just going to split them into two and put one just at the front there and another one hiding in between these two stones just here. And then it's more of a foreground plant. We've got the Pogostemon Helferi is this lovely little bushy number. Again, that can just go around the rocks. And I'm trying to encourage this to look fairly filled in straight away. So I'm placing them fairly close together and hope that that will just go bush, bush out. And then we've got another Anubius. This is the Nana Gold, which again, I'll do the same sort of thing around this side probably, and maybe one it towards the back. In fact, what we might do with this one is have that... Uh, I kind of like the idea of putting it in here, but then it'd be really close to the light and it'll probably just burn off and die. So what we might do is stick this one in behind this rock. Like so. I might need some super glue on that one to keep it where it's meant to be. But there is somewhere for it to grow. Oh, I don't know about that. Maybe it can go here. Again, same thing, don't want to bury the rhizome, so I'm just checking that that's not buried. Yeah, that's pretty good. Right, I do want something on that bit of wood though, so maybe some java fern. So, some java fern. What I really like about this is it's completely wedgeable. <laughs> What I mean by that is, again, there's a rhizome in there and then these black bits are the roots. Um, but it can just be wedged and the roots will be able to still get nutrition out of the water column. And this particular bit of wood is very wedgeable. It has a high wedgeability factor. So if I stick that there and broke that leaf, that's too high though. Um, okay, plan B for that one. I think that's going to have to be still, still going to wedge it, but it's going to be wedged there instead. 
and then something on the other side doing similar sort of vibe. There's a little bit of wood down here I could wedge it into or between. That sits in there okay. I do want something in that middle bit though, but I don't want something too tall because then it'll be no, too tall. Hmm, let's have a look. Maybe some sacrificial pieces of Anubius. So this is another Nana Gold. That was the one I was thinking about putting there. This one's actually got a flower developing. So I hope it's not a sacrificial Anubius. I can never remember when I'm talking about these, whether I say Anubius or Anubis. Well, that used to making jokes on the live stream about my chitslids and my Anubis and my Anubius. Plant names are stupid. And I might need a dot of glue if I can't wedge that. If I do any uh, cyanacrylate glue, this one with the green one with the Gorilla Glue is fine, but there are specific ones made for aquariums which you don't really need, but if you want to be 100% sure that you're safe, that might be the way to go. Oh, that kind of almost looks like it was made to go there. Um, so, like I said, I'm going to have the filter there, so I don't want to put anything too close to that corner. It will just get battered by the water coming out. Whereas if I get some vowels, some java fern, they'll grow in. There's plenty of plants in there for first off. So I think that's pretty good. I'm kind of happy with that. Um, so I'll get it filled with water. That's the next step. Okay, we're in. I've got all the plants in. I've added a couple more plants because after it filled, it looked like there was a couple of gaps. Things will grow in, but I do want to give a bit of a initial bump and get things going straight away. So I'm, I'm kind of happy with that. I know it's going to fill out in the coming weeks and months, but I can always add more if I want to. Um, so next is about getting the filter in. So I've decided that I'm going to use this filter. So this is a, this is a Fluval internal filter. I think it actually came with this tank. Uh, I'm using it because I've got it. Um, I think it'll be better than the, the sponge filter. It'll create more flow, flow being a good thing. The way this works is it's got these cartridges in it. It's got two of these, two of these cartridges either side, which are just like for sponge. So that does your initial mechanical filtration. I've just filled them with my Timu special sponge. It comes great. Um, and then in the center, it's got one of these cartridges, which I can fill with media for ceramic media for, uh, biological filtration. So what I'm going to do is that big tub there you can see behind the filters mega tank has sacks and sacks and sacks of media in there already cycled. I'm going to fill this up with that so as it's ready to go. So I just need to grab some out of that and we can fill this up. So I'll just arrange that a bit better. But one of the other things that I like to do is when I use plants so all of these potty plants if you buy potty plants from me they'll come with these weights just to hold them down because you can just drop the pots in and they'll be fine for weeks if not months when i take them out i harvest these so when i use some media i can add this back into that sump and this will act as a biological media as well because these are just these are ceramic with lots of porous holes that can be filled up so it's just like a bit of a, an everlasting cycle just drop these in a few weeks they'll be ready to use as well but for now i shall just get all this arranged and we'll stick it in and get it going this isn't a lesson about which one media is better than another media it just so happens that i'm using biohome because i can get two rows of this biohome ultimate in there and still get it to work um, it's an extremely efficient media other medias are available this isn't about what one's better than another but that'll do a good job. So we'll get that in, get the filter hooked up and get it running. I don't really need a heater in this tank because the heater is, the room is heated. Um, so we'll play that by ear as to whether we actually need it or not. We'll get the filter in. Um, okay. Filter's running, everything's fine, it's clearing up. I forgot one vital step, little stones. So these are like accent stones. Hey, look at that. It's a fossil. 
that was just in my random box of rocks and um, so we'll keep that one um, but all the other ones are like the same type of stone that's in there and what I want to do is smash them up into smaller bits even smaller than that just to dot them around on the outside I might keep a couple that size just to give a little bit of interest and it just looks a little bit more natural when you have a little bit more rubbly stony goodness anyway smashy smashy dribbly dribbly we're essentially there now um, I like to leave it a couple of hours at least just to get things moving so the filter's running and um, normally when you've just first filled up an aquarium it'll get loads of bubbles and stuff and I just don't like putting fish in there if I hadn't put in some filtered filter filtered filter media cycled filter media that means the filter media that we put in there all that bio home has lots of good beneficial bacteria in there if I hadn't got that don't put fish in this is the hardest part in fish keeping is you get a lovely tank and you want to throw fish in and it's just not cycled and it just it will end in disaster so that's why I have, luckily, with a fish room, lots of cycled bacteria. I can put fish in straight away, but I'm going to leave it a few hours um, just to let the bubbles, bubbles settle and everything start looking okay. So it's the next day. We've got some fish in here. We've got some cherry barbs, some pearl danios, one of my rams. I've still got several other fish that I want to bring in, but this should be a nice little community. Not sure about the rams, but we'll see how we get on there. Um, basically, I've just been using fish that I've already got in the fish room in various tanks and moving them across. Um, there's still more to come because they're quite hard to catch these little fish but I'm already liking the way they're looking the cherry barbs have coloured up nicely uh, every, everyone's acting nicely um, we've even got a couple of cherry barb fry in here um, so they're doing well hopefully everyone will act nice and friendly towards each other I've not seen any aggression but like I say it's only been a day or so um, so we should be good. If you don't have any cycled media to put into your filter straight away, the only bit of advice I'll get you is go slow. Stock slowly. Don't add loads of fish at once. I know this filter will keep up this bio load and it'll be fine. I have access to do regular water changes. It won't be an issue. Um, but if you don't have cycled media, just take things slow. The best bit of advice you can ever get about this hobby is just slow down, take your time, and things will look pretty good. If you like any of this stuff, all these plants for instance are for sale on my website, shameless plug. Um, you'll see links in the description for the filters, the lights, the tanks, everything that I've used in this video or would recommend. I'll put links in the description, you can go and check them out on your own. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching and let me know what you think. Is this good? I think this looks pretty cool. Uh, I'm really happy with it. Come along to my Friday night live stream, tell me what you think there as well. If you're interested in joining, there's a link down there where you can join to be a member. Um, I'm going to try and do more member content, um, so it might be worth it. Thanks for joining me though. If nothing else, watching a video always helps. See you in the next one. Bye!